welcome to the Kelsey Creek Church Podcast, where we follow Jesus together in all of life. Enjoy! Today is the day most churches around the world really start to look at the events of Holy Week. And this is because this is where a lot of the action, so to speak, starts to happen. We find that Jesus' significant teachings and activities happen on this day. One of them we practice as a church in present times. Today's reading comes from Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 75, spanning over about 58 verses or so. So I will not be reading all of them. But for your convenience, I will place the link for the audio Bible for today's reading below in the description of this podcast. I would like to draw our attention to three of today's events. First, the Last Supper. Second, Jesus' arrest. And third, Peter's denial. So first, let us start with the Last Supper. In our churches, we practice this sacrament for some every Sunday, for others once a month, and for some every quarter, and for others once a year. There is no formula as to how much we should partake in this meal, as the Apostle Paul reminds us that it is as often as we do it, leaving it up to our own discretion as a church. Either way, there are two elements that we take during this meal, bread and wine. This is taken right from here in today's event. Our passage today tells us that during the meal, Jesus took and blessed the bread, unleavened bread to be specific, and broke it and gave it to his disciples saying, Take, eat, this is my body. And the meal probably went on for a bit. Conversations happened. Stories was told. Laughter. And then Jesus took the cup. The third cup of the Passover meal to be specific. And thanking God, he gave it to them saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood. God's new covenant poured out for many people for the forgiveness of sins. This is where the elements get extremely important. Jesus is communicating something through the elements that he chooses. First, the unleavened bread, being a symbol of his body. See, the festival of unleavened bread had just started. And this festival overlaps with Passover, just for a bit during the evening. The festival calls for ones to eat unleavened bread for seven days and to remove all leaven from their homes before the feast begins. The leaven represents sin, and the festival is a reminder that it is God who delivers from sin, just as he delivered his people from Egypt. So Jesus taking the unleavened bread to be a symbol of his body says, This unleavened body shows his body as sinless, the perfect sacrifice. Then the cup. During Passover, there are four cups. The first cup is the cup of sanctification. The second cup is the cup of judgment or deliverance. The third cup is the cup of redemption. And the fourth cup is the cup of praise or consummation. So, hmm, guessing which one Jesus took? Yep, it's the one that I mentioned earlier. The third cup, the cup of redemption. He took that cup and said, this is my blood. God's new covenant poured out for many people for the forgiveness of sins. And here is something that is super significant that Jesus did. He did not partake in the fourth cup, that cup of praise or consummation, saying, mark my words, I will not drink wine again until the day I drink it new with you in my father's kingdom. And he said this after the third cup. That fourth cup, the cup of praise or consummation, is his promise to us that he will return for us 
and that we will drink it together at the marriage supper of the Lamb. So every time we eat the bread of the supper or drink the cup of the supper, let us be reminded that we indeed proclaim that Jesus was the perfect sacrifice for our sins and that we are redeemed through his blood. Well, later on that night, Jesus was in the Garden of Gethsemane. And there it happened, folks. Jesus, Judas betrayed Jesus with a kiss and he was arrested. Not before some fighting, though. Peter, one of Jesus' closest friends, came to hit his defense and cut off the air of the soldier who was trying to arrest him. Peter did not want to see his friend leave. He knew that Jesus was innocent and at the time he was willing to risk it all to save Jesus from those guards. Have you ever wondered why they did not arrest Peter for insulting the soldier? Me too, and I have no idea why. But either way, Jesus reattached the air and he accepted his arrest. One of the most important things for everyone and what everybody is looking to find out when a person is arrested is what are the charges? This part of the story is eye-opening when it comes to seeing what the people's claims are for Jesus' death. Why should he be killed? A huge, objection to, a huge objection to Jesus is that he never claimed to be God. I think the people who heard him might beg a differ. Jesus said, But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One, and coming on the clouds of heaven. And from that statement, the people of his day responded saying, he blasphemed. Why do we need witnesses to accuse him? You all heard him blaspheme. Are you going to stand for such blasphemy? They said death. And that sealed his death sentence. What was the blasphemy? His claim to be the Son of Man, which communicated divinity. Remember when I said earlier this week that there would be gaslighting and manipulation and lying? Well, here it is. The leaders have convinced the same people that were shouting Hosanna earlier this week to shout, kill him, by twisting Jesus' words and making him look like a liar. Now, Instead of the people rioting because Jesus was arrested, they are now celebrating that he is arrested and they want him dead. For a short time, I would like to draw our attention to the third event, and that is the denial by Peter. Yes, the same Peter that risked it all for his friend just earlier. Later that same night, he denied Jesus three times. The event went like this. Peter was sitting out in the courtyard. One servant girl came up to him and said, You were with Jesus in Gatling. In front of everybody, he denied it. I don't know what you're talking about. As he moved over towards the gate, someone else said to the to the people there. This man was with Jesus the Nazarene. Again, he denied it, salting his denial with an oath. I swear, I never laid eyes on the man. Shortly after that, some bystanders approached Peter. You've got to be one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he got really nervous and sore. I don't know the man. Just then, a rooster crowed. Peter remembered what Jesus had said. Before the rooster crows, you will deny me three times. He went out and he cried. This was one of Jesus' closest friends. The one who said, you are the Messiah, the son of the living God. And who Jesus told, this rock, I will build my church and the gate of Hades will not overcome it. Who Jesus called to walk out on water. Who Jesus told that I have plead in prayer for you that your faith 
should not fail. This shows how alone Jesus was. So how does Thursday end? They all left him. After calling them to follow him, they all left him. After he did life together with them, they all left him. After they heard all his teachings, they all left him. After having a meal with them, they all left him. After they watched him being arrested, they all left him. We all left him. Let's sit in that today and think about how God was alone. Lord, have mercy. Let's pray. God, our hearts are just in mourning as we prepare to, to remember your death. Jesus, that you were arrested unfairly and, and you were betrayed and all alone. Yet you knew that you had a mission. Your mission was to save the world. And that's why on that night that you was betrayed, you took bread, unleavened bread, symbolizing your sinless life, being that perfect sacrifice for us. And then you did take that third cup, the cup of redemption, saying that your death, the blood that will be shared on the cross, is the redemption, the new covenant poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Help our hearts. Help our hearts. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen.